Hi, and welcome to Tony's Cool Tools. Last week on video 37, I talked about my outdoor wood boiler, why you should own one, and why you should own the Heatmaster. And as a bonus, if you watch to the end, you'll see some of my feathered friends that stop by every so often and ask for some handouts. The one thing I did not do last week was start it up. And the reason was the temperature was almost 90 degrees. But typical of the Midwest, stick around five minutes, the weather will change, and it has. If you can't see... So the temperature dropped below 32 degrees last night, and there's frost on the pumpkins. So we're going to start the outdoor wood boiler today, and I'll show you how I do it. It's rather early this year. I typically don't start my outdoor wood boiler until October, but here it is mid-September, and I'm already starting it. I wanted to mention early in the year I use my softer hardwoods like box elder or soft maple uh, and then I graduate to the oak and locust afterwards when it's really cold and those last a long time and give me a great coal bed. For ease of use I do separate my species of wood cherry, oak, maple uh, that way I know which ones to grab and how long they've been drying. I briefly touched on video 37, the cleaning process. I've already cleaned it out, so you'll see that, but I'll show you the tools that I use. I had mentioned that most gasification units like dry wood. With every outdoor wood boiler, Heatmaster supplies you with a moisture meter and that you're using the driest wood possible. And this is a very good meter. Let me show you. This has been sitting in the pole shed here. And that's what I'm getting. And if I split it, it might be in the higher single digits. For cleaning the lower gasification chamber, Heatmaster supplies you with this tool. It's a moon-shaped tool and a flat tool. Let me show you how this works in the chamber. So when I'm cleaning the gasification chamber, this moon-shaped tool fits right inside here and you just scrape everything out. And then on either side, I just bring it all the way back and then pull it forward and bring all the debris or all the fly ash back to me. Unlike traditional outdoor boilers that you only clean once or twice a year, the gasification units I clean out about every two weeks. And I put it in one of these galvanized, I clean all the fly ash out of the bottom and out of the burning chamber, I take all the coals that are out there. Now I know you're probably gonna say this guy has way too much time on his hands, but I'll show you something, a little tip that I found and it makes it easier to start your fires when you're uh, when you first start them when I have ash I made this little sifter here I put it in and naturally I leave it for two to three days to cool down but I just put it inside here and and I don't do this I maybe do this once or twice a season so I get enough I sift it all out now I've got coals there, real good coals. Now I can use this also if I'm blacksmithing or I just pour it into my coal bin here. And as you can see, this will last me probably two years or more. Let me show you how it works. I'll be using a similar method to my video number 35, Pyro's Guide to Fire Starting. And I'll show you how that works. I stack two pieces of wood on either side of the opening. Then I use small pieces of kindling. I don't pack anything very tightly. And instead of using newspaper or cardboard or anything else, I find charcoal is the best method. I use two scoops of charcoal, that's it, to get this started. And that's it. 
Before I start the unit, I make sure that the controls here, the main power is on and the recirculation pumps are on. I typically don't play around with this. I let that circulate throughout the year. I never close the upper valve or the lower valves here. Just a little bit of clarification. I cut my wood to 16 inches as opposed to 22 or even longer to fit this totally front to back. And what I do is if you stack the wood and get it tight, it's as good as large pieces. I don't know if this is the right or the wrong way, but this is the way I do it. I stack the wood north to south here instead of east to west. And I use 16 inch pieces and I put my first pieces in and kind of have a little bit of a mound. And then I will toss the other wood in the back as opposed to trying to push this whole thing in front and trying to put wood here in the back. That way I'm not getting all dirty um, with the door and all the soot and everything else. Now there are many ways of igniting your fire. Typical safety matches are one way if, you if you're using paper or cardboard. One thing I did find out from a viewer in Germany and he told me that they're banning or they prefer not using any paper especially with printing on it because of the particulates that they emit from the chimney. They're going similar to California with their rules and regulations in Europe. The next method is the Burnzomatic self-igniting torch. Just press a button and you're ready to go. Once again, I know I'm going to get soot or dirt on my clothes if I have to start reaching in a lot. I really like using the one pound LP canisters, but they've gotten so expensive. I do refill these myself, but I like this particular wand. It's called the Mini Dragon. I'll have information below on where to get it. But it's super simple. Turn the gas on, and there you go. Okay, let's start this furnace up. All I do now is turn the furnace on. Read the messages. The red light goes on, tells me I'm in the low mode, which I need to start the fire. And all we do is hit the cold start now. We haven't started the unit yet, but some of the smoke that you see isn't actually smoke, but dust from the cleaning that I've done. I have not turned on the smoke bypass, which I'll show you momentarily the benefits of it. But we're gonna turn our torch on, and all I'm gonna do is heat the charcoal. And now you see why this long handle tool, this cane, works so well. And all I'm doing is heating up the coals. And once I do that, all the kindling on the bottom will get lit. And now I'm just going to layer some more kindling and some heavier wood on it to get it started. This is why coals are so good to start the initial fire with. We're gonna add some more small kindling to this. And you can hear the noise, it's like a jet engine. I'll toss a piece in the back there, a couple of pieces. And then just load it up. Put a few more pieces in. Little box elder here. We'll leave the door cracked open just a little bit. The temperature shows 82, so we'll see how quickly it'll get up to the 170 mark before it shuts off. A few minutes 
After just a few minutes of burning, there's virtually no smoke coming out. There was just a little puff at that initial burn, and that's it. Okay, the red light has stopped blinking. We have reached working temperature, which is over 140 degrees. So that's the low end of the unit. Before I show you how the smoke bypass works, I'm gonna open up the door so you see if I didn't have the smoke bypass, what would happen? Now it is a little windy here. I open this very cautiously because there could be some gases built up and I open it slowly because I have gotten a burst of gas out of there. So if you notice all the smoke coming out, Now, let me show you what happens when I pull the smoke bypass. That's why you, if you're thinking of getting an outdoor wood boiler, definitely look into this feature. Now when I open it up, virtually no smoke comes out. And that's what we're looking at right there, nice coals. As you can see, no smoke. We've also reached our water temperature. I showed you the sight glass to take a look at the gasification. Let me show you it closer here now. When a unit is gasifying, that's what it should look like. You know it's working well then. One last thing. This unit is so insulated, I can hold my hand here and it's warm, but it's not hot or scalding hot. And if anyone is interested, I'm selling ash for $10 a pound. I'm just kidding. I have a 55 gallon drum full of this. I usually dump it in the woods, but I save a bunch of it because my driveway gets so bad and this is one of the greatest de-icers. And I know that if you go on YouTube, there's a 50, 100 different uses for ash. Soap, de-icer, you can filter water with it. There's a number of uses for this great stuff. As an FYI, I'm going to visit Carl at Sustainable Heating Solutions to find out what new models they have of the Heatmaster outdoor wood boilers in the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned for more information on outdoor wood boilers. Well, I hope you found this video informative and you know a little bit more about outdoor wood boilers. And if so, please like, share, and subscribe. And remember, pass it forward. Make the world a better place. And don't be a tool. Watch Tony's Cool Tools. Thanks, until I see you next time. Morning guys, how are you? Hey guys, what's going on? There you go. You get big, Thanksgiving's coming.